I just finished filming. I'm out here alone right now. And I'm hearing noises. Peter's breath was caught in his throat as the creature neared closer and revealed its grotesque form. I swear I just heard wood knocks and I just heard footsteps right here. Hello everyone, I'm Max, and tonight I'm here to maximize your fear. Usually I put together scary compilation videos of scary creatures caught on camera and tell scary wood stories from the comfort of my home. But tonight, as you can see, I'm out here in the deep woods all alone. And I'm gonna be sitting here in this chair recalling some of the scariest true creature encounter stories and woods horror stories ever. I really wanted to bring these stories to life and I figured this is a very unique and terrifying way to do it. And stay tuned as the last story is a personal encounter that I had in these exact woods. So as always, grab your Maximum Fear coffee mugs and allow your fear to be maximized. So this first story is a first-hand account from a man named Peter Harris. Peter Harris was a man of the mountains. He had lived in a small cabin nestled deep in the Appalachian forests for nearly two decades. Peter cherished the tranquility of the wilderness, the sound of wind rustling through the trees, and the calls of distant wildlife. His life was simple, tending to his garden, hunting for food, and occasionally making the long trip into town for supplies. One chilly autumn evening, as the sun dipped below the clouds and the sky began to darken, Peter decided to take his dog Hunter out for a walk through the woods. The forest cabin was surrounded by trees on every side and it was very dense woods, so it's hard to get around and hard to see, and you don't really know what's lurking around. The path they took today through the woods was a path they always traveled on, they would always go for long walks on this path, and nothing really ever scary happened, but eventually they reached a small stream and the dog began to drink the water. As they walked, air grew colder and fog began to roll in. Peter felt an unease settle in the pit of his stomach, an inexplicable sense that something was different about this night. Hunter the dog, usually lively and curious, was unusually quiet, sticking close to Peter's side with his ears perked and eyes darting nervously. They reached the stream and Peter knelt down and began to get the water with his canteen. As he filled up his water, Hunter let out a loud growl, looking at something across the stream. He patted Hunter's head, trying to reassure him that nothing was there, but something was lurking in the trees and he didn't know it yet. Suddenly a branch snapped in the distance and they looked over and they saw something, and this is when Peter's heart skipped a beat. He stood up slowly, scanning the darkness, trying to make sure that what he saw was real. It was extremely tall, much taller than any human, with an oddly distorted silhouette. Its eyes glowed a sickly yellow in the dim light, piercing through the fog and locking onto Peter's. A wave of fear washed over him, unlike anything he had ever felt. He instinctively took a step back, but Hunter, growling fearlessly now, lunged forward, barking furiously at the creature. The figure moved, not walking, but gliding towards them. Its movements were unnaturally smooth and fluid. Peter's breath was caught in his throat as the creature neared closer and revealed its grotesque form. It was covered in matted fur with long bony fingers and arms, and reportedly its hands ended in sharp claw-like fingers. Peter knew he had to get away, so he grabbed his dog by the collar and they ran out of the woods as fast as they could. But as they ran, they still heard the footsteps of this giant creature behind them. They could hear the steps as they ran, getting closer and closer, but they kept running and running, not looking back. And after about 10 minutes of running, they finally reached their cabin. Still with the creature hot on their trail, they bursted through the cabin door and shut it quickly and bolted it tight. Breathing heavily, Peter grabbed his rifle and sat by the door just listening, hearing if this creature was going to come back. He waited there all night, clutching his firearm and with his dog Peter sitting right next to him. They both didn't sleep the whole night until finally dawn broke. And now that it was light out, they knew the creature was gone. They went out and investigated and they didn't find any creature. There were no more noises, no more sounds, no more creature. But deep clawed footprints marked the ground of his cabin, confirming what he had seen was no nightmare.
From that day on, Peter never ventured into the woods after dark. The peace and solitude he once cherished was now tainted by the memory of the horrifying encounter. He couldn't shake the feeling that that creature was still out there watching and waiting for them. And though he never saw it again, the fear lingered, a constant reminder of the unknown terrors that lurk in the woods of the Appalachian Mountains. Now this absolutely terrifying story and encounter is proven to be 100% real. So this one might be one of the scariest of the video. And trust me, you won't be expecting the ending. A young man and woman from Utah went on their first date together. They went out to dinner to a nice diner and they hung out and talked and got to know each other like a typical first date. But for some reason, they both weren't really hitting it off too well and their personalities didn't really match up too well. And the date was just overall kind of awkward and they weren't having very much fun. So the man gets desperate and comes up with a kind of strange idea and says, hey, do you want to go hiking with me in the stretch of woods that I'm familiar with in Provo Canyon? And of course, this kind of sounds like the start to any horror movie and anybody in the right mind would say no. But for some reason, the girl says yes, as the man did seem pretty trusting and sincere. And he told her that it would be OK and that if she wanted to leave at any time, that he would take her back and that he wouldn't hold her there or anything weird. So against her better judgment, she did agree to go. The man goes mountain climbing in Provo Canyon, so that's why he knows the area very well. So anyways, they begin their drive out to Provo Canyon and they're both excited because neither of them were really having any fun at the diner and it was just really boring. So their adrenalines were pumping as they were about to venture into the unknown woods late at night, which is creepy enough on its own. So eventually they reach the canyon opening and they both began to walk down this trail. At first, the trail is rather wide and open with trees surrounding, obviously, but it's not too heavily forested. But as they walk deeper and deeper, the path becomes more narrow and darker and more surrounded by trees and vegetation. And as they ventured deeper and deeper back, it got super dense and they just couldn't really see anything around them. And as they ventured deeper into this area specifically, the man recalls suddenly feeling a very intense feeling of dread, like something was wrong or something was watching him. And he just couldn't shake the feeling. And despite feeling this way, he decided to keep pushing on because he didn't want to seem like a wuss and he had already convinced this random girl to come all the way out here in the woods and he didn't want to seem like some weird psychopath. But it turns out he wasn't the only one feeling this way because the girl was feeling the same way and she was too scared to talk about it as well because she figured that he was all hyped up about this, this night hike and she didn't want to ruin it. So, so they both continued on despite feeling this very anxious and very unsettling feeling as if they were being watched or something. And this is why we should always trust our intuitions because as they walked along, the man suddenly stepped on something that he described as soft. He didn't say much, he just said it felt like it was soft. So as he's standing there in the middle of the woods, in the middle of the night, just standing on something, he doesn't know what it is. He suddenly hears something or someone moving right in the brush beside him. They were both so scared and caught off guard by the whole entire encounter that they just didn't look down and they just turned around and both began running out of the woods. They hightailed it out of the woods until they finally got out, reached their car, got inside, drove away, and never looked back once. And luckily they didn't. They were both super scared and just didn't know what happened, and they were both glad they didn't have to find out. But eventually, years down the road, they would actually find out. Surprisingly, this couple actually ended up getting married, despite this very strange first date. But anyways, this day they were sitting on their couch in their home watching TV. They were flipping through the channels trying to find something interesting to watch when they came across a death row inmates interview. It was an interview with one of the most infamous serial killers of all time. So they clicked on it and began watching. Did you hear that? So they began watching the interview and everything seemed normal, well as normal as a serial killer interview could be. Then the interviewer gets on the topic of times he was almost caught. So he asked him something like, when was a time that you were the closest to being caught? He says, there was this one time I was out in Provo Canyon, Utah, late one night, and I had just finished murdering a girl. And right after, as the body was laying on the path, a couple walked up and stepped on the body. And for some reason, they just turned around and walked away and didn't do anything about it. The guy didn't even look down to see what he was stepping on. They just walked away. And he didn't even see me just sitting there in the bushes, just feet away from him. The serial killer that was hiding in the bushes was Ted Bundy.
So this story here is actually a personal story that I had here in this exact woods. And I even caught it on camera. A couple of my friends and my brother and I always loved to hike through the woods and go to this creepy abandoned house in the back of the woods. So we would always play hide and seek back in this woods and we would just explore everywhere. And one day we hiked miles back and we found this really creepy old big white house. It was obviously abandoned because it looked old and nobody's living there and the lawn was all kind of overgrown and everything. You know, we went up and explored it and we thought it was really weird. And you know, just as typical kids do, exploring, filming things. And so this time in particular, it was actually my brother and a couple of my friends, my good friends growing up. So we walked around the house just filming, seeing if we could capture anything weird. And we really didn't think we were gonna capture anything. We just watched too many TV shows and you know, we're like, oh, we wanna ghost hunt, we wanna film this and that, go to this abandoned house, it'd be cool. It was midday too. But to our surprise, we actually did capture something really creepy. We didn't really know it at the time because in the moment we didn't see it but we played the footage back later that night and we couldn't believe what we saw. And I'll go ahead and show the footage. So as you can see in the footage, there's this weird white shadow, like small white ghostly looking shadow, almost like a Pac-Man ghost or something. You can just see it dart through the window slowly. When I slowed the footage down, <laughs> things bugs. We couldn't, we didn't really know what to make of it. I mean, it's an abandoned house. It's a ghostly like figure. In movies and in stories, you always hear about ghosts living in abandoned houses and things like that. So, I mean, we didn't really know what else it could be and we still don't. So I wanted to show you guys the footage and tell the story in this woods where it actually happened. Also, another time we went back and we were filming, we used to film all kinds of videos. We were doing like a flips video outside of an abandoned house or something. So we got up really close to the house with our phones and we were videoing and our phones had never glitched out before or anything weird while we were videoing and our storage was completely fine. But somehow my phone glitched out and I caught it on video. And also we had just caught a snake and we were holding a snake, but that's kind of irrelevant. But so yeah, my phone glitched out. It said that supernatural and paranormal entities can make phones glitch out and technology glitch and stuff. The fact that those two things happened at that house shows us that there could be something weird going on there. There is probably a possible way. All right, here we go. Whoa, dude, dude, my phone glitched out. No, look. What the? It's video. No way. Nah. Look, my phone is frozen. Hold on, wait. Let's see what happened in the actual video. Let's see if it started. It just glitched out. But on yours, it made like. No, you should have seen it. They're, oh my. Oh! It just glitched out. My phone glitched out. <laughs> oh my. Oh my gosh. Video, no way. Nah. Dude, just. But yeah, so in the video, we walked around the house and filmed everything around the house, like in the windows and everything. And that was the only weird thing we caught. And we've done that so many other times. Even after this encounter, we've gone back and we never really captured anything else, which kind of proves that, you know, maybe there was something there and, you know, the house maybe hadn't been explored or doesn't really see people much. And so we were just like the first people to catch it or something, I don't know, but it was weird and that's what we caught. And I'll go back, like I'm filming this video here. If this video gets 1.5 thousand likes, I will go back to the house, right outside the house and film another one of these in-person scary story videos right outside of that house. And then as I'm filming it, we can like film in the windows and get creepy shots and show you guys what's in the house too as I film it. And it'll be like, a, I could do like a creepy abandoned house or abandoned building horror stories video. So if you want to see that, let me know. But yeah, I think that's going to do it. Just finished filming. I'm out here alone right now. And I'm hearing noises. I can't see. I'm getting chills, bro. I'm getting chills. I can't see anything. I'm hearing wood knocks. I heard footsteps right here. 
next to me. This is terrifying, dude. Bro, I swear I hear something running towards me, bro. No joke. I'm out here alone right now. Right in there, I just heard a wood knock. I just heard another wood knock. As soon as they left. My crew left. All right, I should probably get out of here now. I'm not even joking either. Like people, a lot of people fake this for the cameras. I swear I just heard wood knocks and I just heard footsteps right here in this brush. But then all of a sudden they disappeared. I didn't hear anything running away. Just disappeared, dead serious. Packing up. Look at that, baby. Mosquitoes all over me. Bro, I just heard a whooping noise, bro. Bro, I've never, like... All right, let me, let me focus on getting out of here. All right, I got my camera and my flashlight in one hand. We're getting the heck out of this woods. Just finished filming this video. I'm hearing whooping noises. I had a camera crew in here. They left because I wanted to get some B-roll footage. As soon as you guys left, I heard two loud knocks on wood pretty close. No, knocks, like, like hard thumps. And then I heard rustling footsteps like right beside me. No joke. I was filming it. I don't think you can be, you're gonna be able to hear it. And I heard a whooping noise. All right, I don't know if you can see, but we're out here right now. This is where I'm filming it. Oh my gosh, the lights just turned off and went pitch black. All right, so we're out here, out here very late at night. <laughs> and um, film a video in the woods back here. So I came up with the idea. It was late one night, I was just laying in bed and I was trying to think of like, what's a cool idea to like bring a story to, to life? And I think a way to bring it to life is to actually be in the environment. So I'm out here, deep woods, horror stories while in the woods by myself. I brought a creepy ass chair. I'm gonna set it in the middle of the woods. I'm just gonna be out there telling stories from memory, kind of. I'm gonna have a laptop script below me too, but I'm just gonna do this and first time, we're gonna see how it goes. And if you wanna see more, just gonna like, yes. <laughs> Into the woods we go. Also, not only could there be creepy creatures out here and ghosts and crazy people, but the biggest threat is wild animals. Wow, this is pretty creepy. Look at this, shine down up the path. Wow, man. All right, this chair is heavy, dude. This is exactly what Maximum Fear would tell you not to do. But we're trained professionals. About to see a skinwalker over here, dude. We should do some Bigfoot house. <gasps> see these skinwalkers? Look at this. I don't know, man. Where do we? Did I just hear a howl, bro? That sounded weird. All right, I think it's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did enjoy, go ahead and smash the like button's mom. Let's aim for 2,000 likes for another one to be scary in person, in the woods, bringing the story to life videos. And if you wanna to get to know me more, go ahead and follow me on Instagram, Maxwell Fear, and go ahead and follow me on TikTok, Maximum Fear YT. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel because only 14% of you guys who watch my videos are subscribed, and be sure to hit that bell as well so you don't miss when I upload. Also feel free to check out my special Maximum Fear merchandise and coffee mugs. The link will be in the description down below. I don't have my mug with me today because I'm out in the middle of the freaking woods. But I hope your fear was maximized. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.